Behind me is a whole bunch of film equipment and behind you is also a whole bunch of my film equipment. And this is gear that I've collected over the past few years, which has served me really well. But I think in the season of life that I'm currently in, it's time to cull a few things and possibly get some newer things but more the culling side of things. So we're gonna go through all my equipment, see what I should and shouldn't keep, and maybe it's something that I can also pass on to other aspiring filmmakers or sell it to maybe recoup some of the money back. This is something that I've been putting off for quite a while, so before I change my mind, let's get into it. All right, let's do this. We have about a million products to go through, but essentially what we're gonna do is start off with each case, which is the Pelican cases I own, which is the 1510 and the 1615. And then we'll go through all the miscellaneous gear that's outside of these cases. And I'll share my thoughts very, very briefly. And I think just an idea of if it was a good purchase or not for me. So that way, if you're looking to maybe get one of these, which granted it may suit you to get one of these items, but some things you can probably skip out on and avoid the mistakes that I did. But before we get started, let's film what exactly is the gear that I'm using because that won't be in the film. And essentially I'm filming this on my Canon R6 with the 35 mm lens. And then on top for audio, I'm a little bit lazy. So I went with just the Rode Video Micro so I can show you most of my audio gear. We got the Aperture 120D with the 90 centimeter softbox. I got my case here. As you can see, it's super messy around. So after this video, hopefully things will be a lot cleaner as I decide to discard a few things and keep some stuff. And then finally, I have just my 80 centimeter reflector over here. And that is a keep, because that is super, super handy. Anyways, let's start with the first case. As mentioned before, this is the Pelican 1510, and I've had this case for quite a few years now, and it's held up really, really well. And if you're looking to travel, I would highly recommend it. Jumping into the case in the top left-hand corner is the Mavic 2. This is probably some product that I could probably live without, but now that I have it, I am excited to use it a lot more, so this will be one that I'll keep. It does have a one inch sensor and all around a pretty cool piece. In the next two pockets, we have the Canon LPE6 charger, which is very self-explanatory. We have a magic arm, a USB-C cable, and a roll of film. A little bit random, but these knickknacks do come in handy every now and then. Next to that, we have NPF batteries which are just super versatile to have for any filmmaker. For me, it plugs into my lights and monitors, and for some people, it can also plug into their cameras. Underneath that, we have a few more random things, uh, such as the Mavic battery, which is definitely a keep. We have a windshield for the Zoom H1, which is actually in my other case. We also have the Rode Wireless Goes. This is the first gen, and I do Oh, I have upgraded to the second generation, which now has two transmitters, but this one is just a good backup. So I probably will keep this or let Bayer use this one. And I've just put a piece of Velcro on it to keep them together. As you can see, this case does hold a lot of little things such as small rigs, matte box adapters to screw on lenses. I also have a roll of tape and these are two must-haves. And then I have a 3.5 to XLR adapter, which is always handy. And then finally, which is something I'm probably gonna get rid of, is a little spigot thing, which is a goner. In the biggest pocket, I have, I think about six things. Number one being the Nissi uh, pouch that I just got with my ND filter. It's actually empty, so I'm not too sure what I'm gonna put in there just yet. I also have a white, black, and gray card, which is super handy for a point of reference for cameras, but you can also go a step further and go with the color chart as well, which probably will be a lot better. Thirdly, I have a tripod plate, which is actually for my shoulder rig. 
So I'm not too sure why I have it in here. I have my Mavic Pro controller, which has the screen on it. So I don't need to connect my phone to the drone every time. And then finally, I have two V-Lock batteries, which are just super versatile. It can output not only V-Lock, but D-Tap and USB. So I can charge most of my accessories or just power them whilst I'm using them. Besides the shoulder rig, I think I'm probably gonna keep all these accessories. V-Lock batteries are just super versatile to have. The only thing I would say when you are looking at V-Locks, they are expensive, but invest in the ones that can output a little bit more juice. So that way you can use them not only on your camera, but lights as well. And that way you can really extend the longevity of your V-Lock batteries. The final two pouches in this case go pretty much hand in hand. Number one, we have the Zeiss cleaning kit, which has like a blower, a brush, and a few little tools that like Allen keys that just rattle around if I didn't have them in a case. On the topic of tools, I do have a little screwdriver in this case as well. This is a flathead, so it's my replacement for a coin and it tightens up tripod plates and different things way better than a coin as well. And I think you can pick these up for less than $2. Lucky last is all the filters I have in this case, which starting from the newest is the ND filter by Nissi. This one I just did a video on and it is such a cool variable ND filter if you wanna check it out. I also have a circular polarizer, which I don't use all that often, but I have it anyway. And these I have both in 82 mil and then just have step down rings. The three other filters are very, very similar. These are split diopter filters. And I do find it allows you to be a lot more creative on set. So I like to have these in my bag. And then the final one is the DreamFX filter. Uh, a video I've done on this as well. But the only thing I would say about this is it's 77 mil and some of my lenses are 82 mil. So I'm not able to use it on those ones. So I might replace this in the future. That pretty much wraps up this case. And now we're moving on to the 1615. And just like the last one, these guys are indestructible. This one also has the track pack divider system, which I recommend as it allows you to get a little bit more creative with the configuration of your gear inside. But to kick it off, this case has lighting gear, audio gear, power, and a C200 kit and a monitor as well. So let's get into it. Starting off with the Canon C200, which is my A camera of choice and possibly might be changing, not because I'm upgrading just yet, but I think this guy has had its season. It has taught me a great lesson of, it doesn't matter what gear you have, you can still create some really cool stuff. And at the time of buying this, I really put a lot of emphasis on the cameras that I wanted to use versus the output that I was outputting. But all around, this camera has really great features and it's uh, probably it's time to go, unfortunately. Next up, we have a Aperture 672. This is the first LED light panel that I bought. And this probably is something that's going as well. It's taught me a lot about lighting, but all around it's not super, super versatile for the stuff that I'm looking to do. Underneath that, I also just have the C200 accessories, such as the sunshade for the monitor, which is this guy with the top handle, uh, which I also added a little bubble level because the C200 doesn't have a level on screen. And then I have the handle, which actually makes the C200 really ergonomic. And then I have a roll of tape. And finally, a SD card holder. This is also by Pelican. Moving on, I have a spigot for the 672 aperture light, a little microfiber cloth, which is from Small HD. I also have a torch, which I like to use for like filming stuff, or even just when it's dark, I can actually look around in my case. Next to that, I have a whole bunch of audio gear, such as my Rode Wireless Go 2s. And now these ones are way nicer because they have two receivers and they also record internally. I've done a video about those. I have my Zoom H5, and this guy could possibly be something leaving as well. The grip over time, I've had this for a few years granted, does get a little bit like sticky, which is not really nice. Underneath that, I also have a Zoom H1, which a lot of wedding photographers 
used, so I ended up getting one for a wedding. And all around, it's, it has really good audio quality for what it is. Underneath that, I have more AA batteries. These are AnyLoop Pros. It's kind of what the photographer's really go-to batteries are. And then finally, I have an XLR cable. I think it's about a five meter, could be shorter, but all around, it's really handy to have. Also in this case, I have a little mic holder, as well as a bag of different cables, such as HDMI cables, USB cables, some little spigot things, as well as batteries. I do really like these cases. I actually picked it up from Daiso, I think for like $2. Also have in here some SDI cables, a dummy LV6 battery, and a few more. And then the only other thing in this pocket is a power for the C200. And this is actually something that I learnt to carry because originally I didn't have it and then when my batteries ran out, usually I don't carry the C200 battery charger with me. So having this just as a backup is always very handy. And maybe that's something that you could think about as well. Even if it's not a C200, about other cameras, having the mains power just with you just in case could be a good option. For the power edition, I do also have some more accessories like a adapter for different countries. I think I spoke about this in one of my first YouTube videos, but these are awesome. It allows you to plug any country into one side and then output it into any country on the other. It has two USB ports and a USB-C port as well. And then finally, I have this funny looking power board except it's a power cube, which has four outlets and two USB ports. And it's just, I think, a better form factor for me to carry around. Now moving on to the top, starting off in the top right-hand corner, I have a magic arm connected to a super clamp, which is super, super handy, especially if I don't want to use too many stands. I can connect small things like a microphone or a light to this, and it's really nice. Next up, I have a metal light holder, which is really good for my big umbrella. And the only thing I would say, it has a bit of a design flaw that this handle blocks this screw. In the biggest top compartment, I have my small HD 702 Bright, which I've had for quite a few years now. And on top of the small HD build quality, I think the reason it's lasted quite a long time is because it has SDI and HDMI. If you're looking for a monitor, I would recommend invest in both. And that way, if you do rent a camera that has SDI, you can use your monitor and you don't have to rent one. And seven inches is pretty good, I think, if you're looking to show other people. If you're doing more camera operating by yourself, I think five inch is probably better, just because this time sometimes is just a bigger than my camera and it's not very, very ergonomic. Next up, I have my Aperture F7, which is still, I think, my favorite light. It powers by NPF batteries, or you can power it by DTAP or USB-C. It's pretty bright and it's also bi-color, and I just like how small it is, so I can take it with me to most places. And this generally goes on that magic arm with this super clamp on it, so it is super versatile. Underneath it all, I have my two Manfrotto 1051 BAC light stands, which actually clip together and are pretty flat, so it fits in the case really well. I like these ones because light stands are super awkward to carry, unless you clip it like this, so it's actually super convenient to have. In this big pocket, I also put my tripod every now and then, which I'm actually using. It is the Sarui tripod. I've done another video about it, so I'll make sure to link it somewhere and you can check that one out. Now moving on to the gear that doesn't really go inside these cases unless the job really calls for it. Number one being this shoulder rig. I used this for a documentary in London and Scotland and since then I haven't really used it. I think it kind of hurts my shoulder, especially because I was shooting for the whole day, kind of like hiking the shoulder up and kind of making sure it was level. So I don't know, I might give it one last go, but I think this probably will be in the not keep pile. Next up is some headphones. These are the Sennheiser HD 200s. They're pretty good monitoring headphones. They're under $100, I believe. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is they don't fold up, so 
this might be a go thing. On the topic of Go, my go-to lens is the Sigma 18-35. This pairs really well with the C200. I don't really keep it in the case, mainly because the lenses swap in and out. But I really do like this lens because when you zoom, it doesn't protrude, which makes it perfectly paired with the matte box, which is the small rig matte box, which I've also done a video about. Continuing with the support gear, I have a base plate from small rig as well as 12 inch rods. This I've used on multiple cameras, both the A7S II as well as the C200 and sometimes with the Canon R6 paired with the battery plate. And this I can plug in a power to the C200 or even to any other camera. I think the beauty of buying a generic battery plate is that you can use it with multiple cameras. So this I would probably recommend as a good buy because it's very, very future proof. On the topic of future proof, the V-Lock battery chargers will also last you a really long time because V-Locks are so versatile. I got the dual battery charger. I know there's quad ones as well, but I really like how this one is smaller than the quad. You can get a core SWX battery charger, which I believe is a little bit smaller than this as well, just to save a little bit more space. Moving on to my most recent purchase, which is the Ronin RS2. I used to own the Ronin MX and kitted that out, but I really like how small form factor this is and just the unique shots you can get with the gimbal. I did go through a handheld phase, but I really like the combination of both handheld and gimbal work. I think you get really creative with it. Moving on to small products, the Leatherman is a go-to. I love how it has a knife to open up boxes and packages, especially when we're shooting products, it's good to open stuff, as well as it does have a flat head so you can tighten down your tripod plates if need be. One thing Nissi recently sent out with the ND filter was a step up ring. And this one's actually really nice because it has these rigid edges that you can easily separate your filter from the ring, as well as it has this felt material in the inside to help reduce reflections. Moving up to lighting and grip gear again, you saw the 120D with the 90 centimeter softbox. I use this all the time. Ideally, I would like the Mark II of the 120D, but it could be an upgrade for the future. It's currently sitting on a C stand, which I have two of. These are generic C stands, and they are quite tall compared to, say, Avenger ones, where you can actually pick the height of the post. I am probably going to get rid of these mainly because they take up quite a lot of space, or I might put them in the storage cage. But then again, I I'm not sure if we can just rent them and when we do rent studios anyway, generally they come with stands. So a bit on the fence with that. The other thing I'm on the fence about is the sandbags. So these are the Photix sandbags, which are really, really good. I highly recommend them because they just sit over the post really easily compared to just those single sandbags where they have to kind of spread it across awkwardly. And I really like the handle. It has a little carabiner to go on, say, a jib. But the only thing is, since I'm not going to be using the C stands, putting on the light stands feels a little bit redundant, but maybe we can use them as weights in the house as well. Generally, if I don't use the softbox, I would use this massive umbrella. I've done a video about it as well. I think it's about 180 centimeters in diameter, so you can imagine it's pretty large and it gives you a really nice soft light, it's more like a book light, and you can even make it softer with the diffusion I have for it as well. I think this is a key, mainly because it is really thin and small, so packing it in the car or packing it away in the cupboard is super easy, and then when I need it, I can easily carry it out, open it up, and it's huge light source. One thing I'm probably going to get rid of is this blanket. Now this is a mover's blanket and it really helps with the audio. I don't know if that you can hear it, but I use this more as a sound blanket and I do tell people to use it as a sound blanket just because of how cheap it is. It doesn't do as good of a job as a sound blanket, but it's pretty, pretty close. And especially because it's black as well, you can use it as a negative fill, but it just takes up so much space when it's, even when it's folded up. So I don't know if this would be a keep or maybe a donate. The next item generally sits in my Pelican case actually, but I just found it outside since I haven't been using it all that much lately, which is the Rode NTG4 Plus. 
Now there is an NTG4, but this is the plus, which means that you have a battery built into the microphone as well. But to be honest, if I was to do it again, I'd probably go for just the four because I rarely use the battery inside because my camera has power, the Zoom H5 can give it power. I rarely have things that can't give it power. So you can probably save a little bit of space because I think the battery adds, I think this much on the end. But in here as well, just has the windshield as well as just a small XLR cable to plug it into the camera. The final two products are about the same size. We'll start with the Manfrotto Pixie tripod. I really like this guy because it's so small, but it has a really neat way of moving the ball head. You just push this button and then you can rotate the ball head. The only thing, it doesn't rotate the full vertical if you're using a camera, but it's great for small accessories or putting things on shelves and in small places. So I'm definitely gonna keep this one. And then the final product, I have quite a few of these and you can get them for, I think about $2 from Bunnings. And they're just really, really helpful, especially when I'm using my reflector. Mounting it with just these clamps anywhere is actually super convenient. So that way I can bounce light or whatever and just for backdrops paper all things these guys come in handy so that pretty much wraps it up i would say some honorable mentions would be this turntable i bought off ebay for products this is definitely a go kind of thing and it's not a very good product as well uh, i can mention a buttload of cables that i have like this one's a d-tap to the c200 power I have a billion HDMI cables, SDI cables, a lot of GoPro accessories as well, and Allen keys, but I didn't think I need to mention those, as well as I got a few other light stands, but it's probably gonna go. And I got this case as well from Small HD. This is actually for the 702 Bright monitor, but it's so, like it only will fit the monitor and nothing else. I think it's a bit redundant to use this case, I really like it because I kind of feel like a secret agent, but it doesn't really hold anything. So, a bit of a question mark with this. The last thing I'll leave you with is just a bit of advice, especially after buying all this stuff. I'm sure I'll buy more stuff in the future, but I've really thought about buying gear and even just outsourcing more jobs a little bit differently. Uh, I think previously I was thinking, I will want to do all these different things and I really enjoy making videos so I want to do all the different parts in it but as I get a little bit more experienced I kind of don't really want to buy things now I just want to hire things if I need to and then kind of work that into the quote for the client or if it's something that I don't want to do or I want to do but I just don't have the equipment Maybe I'll look at just outsourcing that to a professional because I think working with other people, actually your result is gonna get a lot better. You can give them feedback, they can give their input and the project itself will just feel a lot better with more eyes on it. And then the final thing is to remember that camera gear and stuff isn't like an investment like maybe a watch or a property or anything. It doesn't really accrue in value, if anything, it's more like a car that's like a Corolla. It really just depreciates as soon as you buy it. So just be wary of the gear that you buy and try not to think that gear stops you from creating what you want to create. A lot of times there are workarounds. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below or shoot them over on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you there. If I do list any of these things, I will post it up on Instagram as well. I've had quite a good success with that. So be sure to follow me and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.